Hey guys, it's Girl Got Game, and welcome to another Gander video. Today, I am taking a look at an indie Atome visual novel called Pocket Love. I was reached out to by Lila Love, uh, who was the developer for this game, and she was wondering if I could take a look at it. Now, I, as soon, as soon as I read the plot for this, I was sold immediately, and You'll see why as soon as I read it to you. <laughs> you might think I'm really silly, but this is a topic near and dear to my heart. Okay, so the plot is, who will win? Will you, the pocket queen, triumph over the king of handbags and luggage? Play as Kara Brennan, which is a renameable MC, a fashion designer who captivates the hearts of women worldwide with pocket equality. She's hell-bent on revenge on the puny pocket sizes, or non-existent pocket sizes, on women's clothing. Her no-handbag vow is under the spotlight. Harry Taylor, the president of handbags and luggage of the Juchi fashion empire, is bewildered by Kara's rejection of his pride and joy. He's both threatened and impressed. Can he win her over? How will you handle the quiet, private Harry Taylor? If you fancy a modern, safer work, romance game with a strong female lead and a dapper love interest, then look no further and enjoy. So anyway, pockets. Can we talk about pockets for like a hot minute? I feel this MC so strong looking. <laughs> I hate the pocket sizes on women's clothing. They are so small. I have tiny hands. I can barely get like three of my fingers into like the front pockets, let alone carry anything. And I've always hated handbags. <laughs> like if I was a guy, I would just put all my crap in my pockets and I would never carry a purse forever. So I feel this girl on a spiritual level. <laughs> I like, yes, pocket equality for all. Ugh. That's one thing I like about some of the new dresses that have come out. They have giant pockets. I can fit like my arm up to my elbow into these pockets. Best pockets. So yeah, anyway. <laughs> Pocket rant over. You can see why I was intrigued. Um, other details about this game. There's one love interest, which obviously would be Harry Taylor, our Juchi mogul. And um, there are three endings that you can get. There's a best, a neutral, and a bad. So yeah, I'm gonna check this out for about an hour. So I'll stop yakking so we can actually get into the game and see what we're in for. I'm gonna keep the uh, custom, um, custom name? Is that right? You know, the current name. I'm just gonna keep, I'm gonna go with Kara. Kara Brennan sounds pretty good. And there's our girl, looking pretty cute. Oh, she blinks! Oh, I think I also forgot to mention this was made for the Atomi Jam this year. So, yeah. Pretty cool stuff. And the love interest is voiced. You can turn off the voice acting if you wish, but I'm going to keep his voice acting on. My name is Kara Brennan. Is this the name you wish to go by? Yes, please. I'm little Kara. I'm a silhouette. Mom! Mom! Look what I found! It's a shiny rock! I always loved going on treasure hunts as a kid. Anywhere my mom took me, I would always hunt for tiny trinkets I could take with me. Bottle caps, sticks, hard candy, you name it. I thought I was an adventurer, but even that long ago, I always had that problem looming over me. <laughs> ah, yes, the... This is true, too. I remember this as a kid. Kara might be me. Where can I put my treasure? Hmm. What about your trouser pocket, sweetie? My nostrils flared in frustration and I stomped my foot. But they're already full. Stupid small pockets. Huh. <sighs> Mom sighed and closed her eyes. She took a deep breath. What if you carried your treasures around in my purse? I knew it wasn't my mom's fault. She just wanted to help. But even so, I still snapped. No! I don't wanna! I don't wanna carry around a stupid bag! 
I tugged roughly at the front of my trousers. You want to know why I'm really, really mad? Mum leaned towards me and squeezed my shoulder. I'm all ears, darling. I pointed accusingly at the front of my trousers and grunted. <laughs> Fake pockets! Mum narrowed her eyes as if she didn't believe me. I pounded my front pockets with clenched fists. See this part right here? It looks like it's a pocket, but when you go to put stuff in it, it's not even real. The clothes are lying. Mum gestured and inspected my pockets for herself. My goodness, Kara, you're right. The boys in my class have jeans just like mine, but they can fit their whole hands in their front pockets. Right? I rolled up my sleeves and crossed my arms. It's so unfair. Mum looked thoughtful for a moment, then beamed. Kara, it's time you and Fifi Lafaf got better acquainted. I probably completely butchered that name. Huh? Who's Fifi Lafaf? Mom winked at me. Fifi's my sewing machine. Come on home, I'll introduce you to. Thanks, Mom. I'll make my own clothes. Just you wait and see. I anxiously bounce on my toes, then wave enthusiastically to the crowd. Tonight's the night, and I couldn't be more excited. Or more nervous. Thank you so much for coming out to my Love Pockets clothing line launch party tonight. In light of my line's mission of offering functional pockets, I've got a personal announcement to make. The audience hushes. Oh, such anger. I stand tall and tighten my fists. Starting in one week's time, I will reject all bags for a whole calendar month. You won't find any annoying handbag slipping off my shoulder. Just me in my Love Pockets clothing line. I'm going to live our mission firsthand and show the whole world that a bag-free life is totally possible. I'll be documenting the whole experience on the Love Pockets social media, of course, so be sure to follow us to keep up with the future of women's fashion. Three die-hard fans jump and cheer, the majority clap and smile, five media people shrug their shoulders, unsure and unimpressed. I let out a deep sigh I hadn't realized I had been holding in. My heart sinks at the media's lukewarm response, but I accept their criticism with a curt nod. You can't please everybody. I signal a thumbs up to the waiters. And with that, please enjoy the rest of the party. I personally recommend the avocado canops, they're divine. The waiters descend into the crowd offering tasty morsels. At least everyone looks excited about that. Sometime later, I look at the clock. No wonder I'm beat. I've just gone three hours straight socializing and showing our new line. My limbs burn, but I can hardly feel it as my mind already starts daydreaming of getting back to work. My workshop, no, my sanctuary, calls to me. My fingers twitch just thinking about putting the finishing touches on my latest trench coat with magnet closures in the pockets. Ooh. My heart craves to reunite with my design. Hmm, what's a good excuse to leave my own party? Indigestion? Lame. Desire to work? They won't get it. Migraine? That's the one! <laughs> Are you sure you're not me? My master plan all thought out, I clap my hands and laugh to myself. I'll feign some interest at the walls, shuffle along the room's outer perimeter, slip out the front door and hail a taxi home, all the while avoiding my BFF Priya. She'd be so upset if she caught me ditching. The thought of Priya's reaction stops me in my tracks. Hmm. All right then, I'll at least say my goodbyes. Ah, uh, how long will it take? I curtly nod to myself. Right, if I'm focused, I can escape in an hour. I begin my search for Priya when the hairs on the back of my neck stand on end. I whip my head around, scanning for the cause of my distress. Oh, that music change. My eyes bulge when they lock with a handsome stranger. I stop mid-stride as I realize I don't recognize him at all. 
I had vetted everyone on the guest list, made sure there was no one I was going to be surprised by. Which means... He's crashing my party! What could be more rude than that? Um... Um, hi. Why are you behind a plant, sir? He locks eyes with me and freezes in place under my glare. After a second's recovery, he seems to eye a solution and dashes away from me. And bends down to hide behind an artificial paradise palm. I snort in amusement as he fluffs up the leaves in an attempt at coverage. There's just simply no hiding his hunky six-foot frame behind a slim five-foot plant. <laughs> oh, hunky, is he? Uh. Catching my eyes once more, he straightens up sheepishly and looks to the exit. Not a moment later, he's making a run for it. He knows I know. He's been caught, and now he's trying to get away. Not so fast, Buster! This guy just won't give up. I start to follow him as he bobs and weaves through the crowd towards the doors. He's clearly trying to lose me, but it'll take more than that to stop me. Hey! Sorry! Step aside! Coming through! I zigzag through the crowd, trying desperately not to bump anyone too badly. Look at him zigzag. His movements are jerky as I close the distance, but he's hardly as graceful as I am. He tries to weave between two partygoers, but ends up bumping into a guest. She cries out as her drink spills down her dress. I stop for just a moment to make sure she's alright, but when I do, I lose him. It's only after I help my guest recover that I see the glass doors click shut. Did he really just get away? I glare at the spot where he used to be and curse under my breath. Where'd he go? The doorman winces as I shove the glass door open with excessive force into his face in a mad dash to catch the stranger. When I make it outside, I look left, then right. Darn! I see no trace of him! Just then, I hear a man cursing and grunting from below. My eyes sweep the area and I spot my target sprawled on the ground, rubbing his ankle. Aha! I've got you now. Uh. A flush creeps across his cheeks. I raise my voice as I approach. It's a fetching shade of red, that carpet. It matches your face right now. Pray tell, who even are you and why are you crashing my party? Uh. He winces and looks down, avoiding my eyes. I squat down to get a closer look at his face and reach out to his chin, about to pull his face to meet mine. Ooh, get it, girl. He opens his mouth to protest, but clamps it shut under my glare. <laughs> my mouth's ready to unleash the Inquisition, but my right calf muscle didn't get the memo as it cramps up. Ow! I curse as I lose my balance and topple on him. Things were going so well. Uh. Oh, that blush, though. His posture stiffens and his muscles turn rigid. A flush spreads across my cheeks at our positions. I tighten my fists and tower over him, determined to get his name. Uh, may you please get off of me? Oh, interesting. Okay, well, I'm just coming off of, like, arcade spirit stuff, so I'm gonna probably go for the top option. I just want to make the sound a little louder. Okay. I think that'll be better. Music's good, I think. All right, we're good. All right, let's let's uh, let's be flirty and see how that goes. I relax my shoulders and grin playfully, even though I was about to like chomp his face off like 0.2 seconds ago. Hi, I'm Kara. I think you misunderstood my intentions. Can you give me your name? If you do, I'll consider adding you to my guest list. He winces at me, then looks away. I'm trapped. Can you get off me? I'm trapped. I smile sweetly. Hi, trapped. Can you get off me? Do you mind telling me your real name? He faces me and raises his eyebrows. Did you just dad joke me? Um. I shrug my shoulders and smile. He bites his lip. I don't want to tell you that. Why not? You got a nice tie and a vest and things. My expression tightens. It's rude to crash parties. He stares incredulously. Yeah, it's also rude to hold hostages. 
Damn. He got me. We're both behaving badly, then. So what can I call you, then, Mr. Gatecrasher? I guess Mr. Gatecrasher will have to do. <laughs> uh, are you sure you want this moment to ruin your launch? All press is good press. Are you joking? Uh, I really need to leave. He tries to wriggle me off, but I'm a dead weight on his hips. Nonetheless, his muscles twitch under me. Mm, please, just let me go. His eyes soften to quiet and pleading. I turn my head to size him up. Either he's a good actor, or he's telling the truth. His voice breaks and his eyes shine wet with imminent tears. Please. Damn it, I'm not that cruel. And I'm a sucker for those sad puppy dog eyes. I take a deep, pained breath and close my eyes. <sighs> you are hereby released. Thank you. Ah. Uh. It's too late. Before I can get off the stranger, cameras are already clicking like rapid-fire machine guns. I untangle from him and dust off my outfit. Hey! Look over here, you two! Who's your boyfriend, Kara? His face flushes. B uh, boyfriend? No, no, there's a, uh, there's a misunderstanding. I'm hurt by his quick denial. I could have strung along the media for a minute there. Oof. Sorry, it's nothing personal. I just can't accept fools. I, I, I mean... <laughs> yes? You want to... Here, do you want another shovel to dig this hole a little deeper? People who think they can survive without bags. Oh. Wow, shots fired. I hold my chin high. Excuse me? Who are you calling a fool? Oh, they're arguing? Shame, you're a good-looking couple. Couple? No way. More like party host and uninvited party guest who refuses to share his name. Uninvited? Say, mister, you look familiar. Um... He whistles suspiciously and looks away. Who? Me? I'm just a nobody. Huh? Suddenly, he yelps and points excitedly in another direction. What's that over there? Look, uh, is that a streaker? The media hungrily seeks out the streaker. I follow the line of sight of the camera person. They've usually got good instincts, so I'm hot on their trail. My cheeks redden as, despite my best intentions to act disinterested, catching a glimpse of a naked person running through the street has piqued my interest and I don't want to miss out. He's even fooled me. By the time I realize his ruse, he's gone. He must have known no one can resist spotting a streaker. Well played. I'm none the wiser about his identity. The doorman shakes his head at me as I fling open the glass door like a gorilla and stomp through like an elephant. I'm not five feet past him when I realize how I've been behaving. Ah, uh, I've let my emotions run my actions. Again. Yikes. This venue is good value for money, too. If I don't fix this now, I'll never be able to book this hall again. Okay, let's smooth it over with the doorman. I got this. I smile sheepishly and wave weakly to the doorman as I approach him. Hey, uh, sorry about the door. And for, um, hitting you with it. He rolls his eyes and shakes his head. Yeah, I know, it was never going to be that easy. Time to roll out the charm to disarm. My foolproof plan for winning anyone over with my cheesiness. I eye his doorman name tag. Hi, David. I'm Kara. I really am sorry about the door and for how I treated you earlier. Do you have any glass cleaner and hinge oil back there? Let me make it up to you. He narrows his eyes, then tentatively hands over the products. I add the oil to the hinges and wipe my gorilla hand slams off with the glass cleaner. I carefully swing the door open and close. I smile at the doorman and return the products. The door is cleaned and appears to be in good working order. Please accept my deepest apologies. His eyes widen as I work and he bursts out laughing when I'm done. Kara, eh? You're a funny one, miss. Go enjoy your party. Don't worry about the door. At the word door, I'm reminded of the gatecrasher. I 
I've got to play it cool, though. I'll likely need this venue again. Say, David, did you notice an uninvited guest earlier? About six foot tall, total hunk- I mean, six foot tall man, royal blue suit. <laughs> Sorry, I've just taken over the shift. Want me to check with the previous person? Never mind. Thanks anyway. I'm in desperate need of a distraction. I scan for Priya, but she's deep in conversation with another guest. I blink my eyes as a radiant glow of gold makes a beeline for me and blinds me on the spot. When the dazzle subsides, a young woman bounces from foot to foot in front of me. Her golden sequin outfit matches her sunny disposition. A fan. Hi, Kara! I I'm Josephina, and I just really want to say that you're my hero! I admire you so much! I'm your biggest fan! I smile warmly at her in recognition. Josephina regularly posts po positive product reviews on my designs on her blog. She is a keeper, this one. Hello, Josephina. It's nice to meet you. I'm really happy to be your hero. I read your blogs all the time. You're a really talented writer, you know. Josephina lays her hand over her heart, and her face is a radiant glow when she hears that I've read her blog. As she starts showering me with thanks and compliments, the handbag on her shoulder catches my eye. My knuckles turn white with how hard I clench my fists. My mouth falls open. Josephina, what's that? I gesture to her handbag. Oh! Well, not everything fits in my pockets. Please don't pay it any mind. The fact your dress designs have pockets at all is a revelation. The vein on my forehead engorges. Are you implying that my designs are so insufficient that you still require a handbag? Her face turns ashen and she blinks rapidly. Uh, wait, what? Um, l let me explain. I need an EpiPen for my allergies and an inhaler for my asthma. They're too bulky for dress pockets, so I always need a bag anyway. I rub my eyes to reaffirm what I'm seeing. My brain's frozen and I can't reconcile that a handbag is paired with my clothing designs. I'm tunnel visioned with anger and I tune out any words coming from her mouth. I crack my knuckles and flex my fingers. You call yourself my biggest fan? Don't you realize using a handbag betrays everything that me and my designs even stand for? B -b 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 I show her my hand and turn my head away. I'm sorry, but I think you're going to need to leave. Now. I'm so sorry, Kara! Josephina squeaks out her apology and scurries away. I seethe as I recall her words, barely hearing the sound of her voice hitching with tears as she leaves. Oof, even I'm not that passionate about pockets. My eyes bulge and I cover my mouth with my hands. Wait, what was it she was trying to tell me? I bite my lip and stare upwards in concentration as I try to recall her words. She has health issues. And she needs extra storage for EpiPen and inhaler? Oh. Oh, crap. I close my eyes and lean my head back. I bring my head back forward and slap my forehead in frustration. I'm such an idiot. Josephina DMs me with an exhaustively long apology. I tap back an apology immediately. I can't believe she's still gracious enough to be my fan. I pinch myself hard to be better. That's it. I'm at my limit. Three hours of socializing, promoting our new line, dealing with a hug- I mean a gate crasher, keeping the doorman and venue on side, losing my number one fan and then getting her back. It's all too much excitement for one night. I look longingly at the glass door that I only just re-entered. How tempting it is to slip back through the door and escape to my workshop. With my legs shoulder width apart, my hands spread and steady in front of me, I dart my eyes around. No Priya. The coast is clear. Operation Escape Party and Go Home is a go! I wince and my ears turn red as I bump into... Sorry. Priya? 
Priya tilts her head and raises her eyebrows at me. Carol? And just where are you headed off to? I poke my tongue at her. Home, of course. My trench coat pockets are calling me and I must respond. Priya crosses her arms. You're leaving your own launch party early. I wink and wave my arm dismissively. Look around. The guests had a great time and they're all drunk. No one will notice my absence. Priya covers her face with her hands and shakes her head. Please tell me you're joking. What? At least end with a toast and offer a discount off all items or something as we wrap things up here. I'll help you with it. Yes, you're the best. Let's do it. I wink at her and poke out my tongue. I hold my hand out for a high five. She withholds her hand. Punishment, no doubt, for my previous failed escape attempt. I pout my lips and wave my hand at her. Come on, don't leave me hanging. Okay, let's put these pockets to bed. I beam at Priya. Finally, the end of the night is in sight. Oh, such colors. My phone rings right as I'm pinning the lining into my trench coat. Kara? Scott Dunlop, TVO's reverses calling. I start biting my fingernails as soon as I hear his name. The last versus battle show, traditional paper books versus e-readers, got unexpectedly heated, and the internet was arguing about it for weeks after. If memory serves, the casualties of war on the show itself were an excessive paperback spine bending and an e-reader screen crackling. Sacrilege on both accounts. The contestants are now sworn enemies. Him calling me can only mean one thing. Hi, Scott. To what do I owe the pleasure? You're officially being summoned. My shoulders slump and I sigh. <sighs> what is this? Jury duty? My fingers twitch, yearning to keep working on my coat. I can't just ignore the media, though. I need all the exposure I can get. Let me guess. You want me on your show. Now, now, Kara. You don't sound too excited to hear from me. Aren't you curious about your uninvited guest from last night? Ow! I jerk upright, yelping as my knee crashes into the table leg. I fumble with my phone, nearly dropping it. Whoa, 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 wait a minute. I'm desperate to know, but try to play it cool. I clear my throat, but the rising pitch in my voice gives me away. <clears throat> You know about that. Do you know who he is? He's the perfect versus opponent for you. Harry Taylor. I gasp. <gasps> the Harry Taylor? As in president of handbags and luggage of Juchi Fashion Empire, Harry Taylor? The one and only. It's bag versus no bag. And I've had a last minute cancellation, so I need you tomorrow. I cross my arms and sigh heavily. <sighs> Scott, that's awfully short notice. I've got deadlines to meet for my clients. He wins by default if you don't show, you know. What did you say? My brow furrows as I tighten my fists. What? No fair! Ugh, fine, I'm in. Great. My people will contact you. Best of luck, Kara. I think I'm gonna have a heart attack. Wh- why? Calm down, Priya. It's just a TV show. <sighs> Priya groans and covers her face with her hand, shaking her head. What? She peeks at me between her fingers and sighs dramatically. <sighs> I frown. I don't get what she's so worried about. Must be my charming personality? No, it's just... a TV show? You're battling against the handbag industry on live television. Aren't you even a little bit scared of what could go wrong? I whistle cheerfully. Nope! This is our golden opportunity. Huh? What better way to show the world that my pockets are totally superior to bags? 
We're anti-bag, pro-pocket, let's show them what we've got. Hmm. Okay. Versus, here we come. That's the spirit. I bite my lower lip. My hand pushes down on my chest in a weak attempt to calm my racing heart. I lean my head back and take a deep breath. You can do this, Kara. Just breathe. My fingers reach for the good luck charm that Priya gave me this morning. It's this tiny parrot squishy toy on a keyring. My fingers grasp around it like a lifeline. When I squish its stomach, it sings out, Polly, want a cracker? My eyes dart nervously, but no one seems to have heard it. I hurriedly turn off the sound switch. A parrot called Polly and a Polly for your pocket. <laughs> I snort at the ridiculous toy parrot called Polly in my pocket. Ah, that's, that's cute. <laughs> Good one, Priya. My mouth drops open as her gift of distraction works wonders. I scratch up my face and nod in recognition that I haven't carried a toy around in my pocket since I was a kid. Was it a Polly pocket? My hand clasps around Polly as my new treasure and mascot. Priya's thoughtfulness is enough to calm my nerves. My skin is trapped under the heavy TV show set makeup. My pores just want to breathe but they're caked under layers of concealer and foundation and powder and bronzer and blusher and God knows what else, so they'll just have to wait until afterwards. Sweat forms on my forehead, but it's got nowhere to go. A burst of schoolgirl giggles threatens to erupt from my throat as I ponder, where does the sweat go if it can't escape? It probably makes friends with my hairline, travels through my hair, and then soaks into my clothes somehow? Ugh, I'll need a full shower and clothes washing after this. I flap my hands frantically to fan myself in an attempt to cool down. I loosen the clothes around my neck as the lights on set roast me like a chicken in an oven. Ready for action stations, everyone. We are going live to air in ten minutes. I swallow excessively. How is it possible that my mouth has this much saliva? Harry looks like he's about to puke. I drag my weary feet over. Are you joining me in the I'm totally ready to puke before live audience club? <laughs> he gulps so I see his Adam's apple bobble. My eyes instinctively travels upwards. His attractive square jawline and baby blue eyes easily trump Polly Parrot as a distraction from my nerves. Mm. I should be used to the limelight by now. It gets me every time, though. I've got a kaleidoscope of butterflies in my stomach, just wanting to burst through and fly away. I offer my new mascot. Wanna squeeze a Polly Parrot for luck? Oh? <laughs> oh? Harry's eyes bulge at the sight of a toy parrot. What in the world is that? I take in a sharp intake of breath, second-guessing myself at my decision to share my precious treasure with him. No time like the present. What's the worst that can happen? He can reject my offer, so what? By rejecting my offer, does that extend to overall rejection of me? Am I okay with that? Ah, heck. Just do it. I press Polly into his hands. She's my new good luck charm. Uh... <laughs> uh... He cringes at the squishy toy in his hands. He coughs and clears his throat. This is the strangest, most random item I've handled in a long time. What was the last one? <laughs> I chuckle at his reaction. My eyes dance and dare him to go further. Don't knock it until you've tried it. Go on, give her a squeeze. His face is unreadable as his fingers squeeze the parrot squishy toy. Oh? His eyes light up. Hey, it's just like those stress relief balls. Seeing his eyes light up does weird things on my insides. I'm as gooey as cookie dough. Exactly. Feeling any better? Um... He shares with me a sad sort of smile. It doesn't quite reach his eyes, but a small smile is better than a puke face, so I take the win. Yes, surprisingly so. Thanks. I hold my hand out. Uh, Harry? I'm going to need Polly Parrot back. He hesitates as he seems reluctant to let Polly go. Like, it's my Polly now. 
He takes a deep breath and places her back safely in my hands. Here you go. At first, he gently places Polly back into my hands, but then he closes my own fingers over the toy and gently squeezes my clasped hands over it reassuringly. He gives me a small nod, as if this was the most natural hands clasping over hands action in the world. My cheeks redden and my heart thumps as his hands feel warm and secure around mine. My cheeks turn a deeper crimson as I want to stay like this a little longer. Please continue to hold me because you feel so good. Our eyes lock for a second before he shyly pulls away. The TV show crew shouts and we spring apart. Ready for action stations, everyone. 60 seconds to go. Scott, Harry, and I are ready on stage. 10 second countdown. 10. What starts as a tickle in my throat escalates to a full-blown coughing fit. Harry claps my back and I mouth thank you to him. Is this a bad time to excuse myself for the bathroom? Nine. I squeeze my good luck charm Polly again. Never mind, we'll be fine. I'm sure there's a recording break sometime, right? Eight. I gulp. Right? Seven. I chant my ma mantra to myself. Love pockets, love pockets, go, go, go! <laughs> Six, five, four, three, two. Happy New Year! I mean, go! He signals two pointed fingers at the TV host, who nods in agreement for the official recording to commence. Good afternoon! Welcome to our TV show Versus! I'm your host, Scott Dunlap. Our contestants today are Harry Taylor and Kara Brennan. Please join me in a round of applause to welcome our contestants today. <laughs> Wonderful! The battles today are bag versus no bag. Allow me to introduce our contestants. Harry is president of handbags and luggage of the Juchi Fashion Empire. He's better known as the king of handbags and luggage. Kara is fashion designer of her own clothing line, Love Pockets. She's better known as the Pocket Queen. The king and queen, eh? Harry and Kara, today you're battling bags versus no bags. There'll be five rounds in total. Harry, over to you first. What's your prediction today? He lifts his chin, sets his jaw, and speaks with quiet confidence. I always win with my bags. Scott whistles in appreciation. Such confidence, I love it. Kara, what's your prediction for today? I hold out my arms wide as if to hug the world. My eyes lock on Priya in the crowd as I grab the good luck charm Polly and wave it at her. Priya gives me the thumbs up. I do a spot turn to showcase my freedom, being bag free. I swing my arms and bounce on the heels of my feet. I smile confidently at Scott. Scott, I'll win. You don't need a bag to live, and I'll prove it. Scott claps enthusiastically. Okay, not the audience so much, but Scott did. Such energy! Well said from the Pocket Queen Challenger. He looks right at the audience and raises both fists in the air. Let's get ready to rumble! Oh, let's look at them, they're so cute! <laughs> she looks so nervous. Round one! Work commute to meet a prospective client at their office. Kara and Harry, go! I body block Harry and muscle my way towards the client. I poke my tongue out at him, but he shrugs and waves his hand dismissively, allowing me to go first. Well, this is supposed to be a battle. But if you're going to be a pushover, don't blame me for taking the win. Quick, high-pitched laughter escapes from my throat. I clumsily grasp and struggle to keep a good handle on all my belongings for the client meeting. <sighs> I curse at Murphy's Law as I drop my sketchbook and tablet. Without my usual backpack, I'm lost. I know, right? I do usually take a backpack to such meetings. However, I vowed no bags for a month, so I can hardly go back on my word. 
I bend to retrieve my belongings, but end up slumping down on the ground in despair. I wince as my knees collide. My arms hang slack by my sides. My chest caves and shoulders lower. I shake my head in disbelief as I perform so badly in the very first round. My heart sinks as papers from my sketchbook litter the floor. I swallow a cry of frustration when a new scuff surfaces on the corner of my tablet. Why today of all days? I bet Harry is enjoying my demise. Where is that hunk? I mean, opposition anyway. A flush of adrenaline tingles through my body as I sense his presence nearby. Ahem. Ahem. Harry bends down so our eyes are level. His eyes are kind. He offers his hand like a true gentleman. Allow me to help. <laughs> Why? Okay. My jaw drops in shock, but I quickly clamp it shut to hide it. I sit up straight and alert. I beam at my savior. Yes, please. Don't worry. When someone needs help, I help. It's the right thing to do. I didn't question it. He kneels down beside me, gathering up my papers. When our elbows bump, his cheeks redden and heat radiates through my chest. For ten glorious seconds, I am weightless as he helps me. What if we were partners rather than opponents? At the word partner, my mind skips from acquaintances to friends to more. Wow. Girl moves fast. Huh. Nervous sweat appears on my forehead. I pinch the skin between my thumb and index finger on the left hand. Ouch! Focus, Kara. Um, he squeezes my shoulder. Are your knees okay? I was worried when you hit the floor there. I'm giddy at his concern for me. My knees are okay. Aw, oh, shucks. Thanks for helping me, Harry. Sure thing. No problem. He stops to examine my sketch. His eyes shine and mouth drops open. Wow. These trench coat pocket designs have function and form. Impressive. I do a double take. If I wasn't already on the floor, I'd be there now. Fallen down from shock, that is. So he's kind and nice? No way. My eyes narrow in suspicion of his kindness and compliments on the battlefield. What's he playing at? He angles his face away from cameras and whispers in my ear. None of this would have happened if you had a carry bag. There it is. My eyes narrow. I turn my head away and cross my arms, muttering curses under my breath. Carry bag my foot. Who needs bags? Certainly not me. Hmm. How I'd love to catch him unawares. He's always so serious and confident. I cross my arms. Uh, back off already. <laughs> Harry flawlessly extracts his binder and laptop with ease from his side bag. I press my hand to my heart, hoping to calm down the roller coaster of emotions inside me. My breath catches as I'm green with envy at him outshining me with the professionalism of his client meeting. My head nods unconsciously in appreciation of the storage and style of his side bag. He catches me admiring his side bag and nods my way. I hide my reddened cheeks behind my hands. I'm such a moron. I should have practiced my stupid. I should have practiced my poker face better. It is a stupid poker face, but I should have practiced it better. Don't endorse the enemy's product on live television, Kara. Stupid, stupid, stupid. Ah! <laughs> Round one, Harry wins on storage and professionalism. Better luck next time, Kara. On to round two for the next battle. I close my eyes. Ah, uh, I lost that one. Damn. Shake it off, Kara. Get that fire back in your belly. Let's focus on the next battle. <laughs> These chippy pictures are so cute. I love it. Round two. Grocery shopping for a one weeknight dinner and making payment. Kara and Harry, go! This one's going to be a cinch. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. I be line for the ready-made meal section. Would Scott and the audience criticize me, or worse, accuse me of cheating for one night dinner? A ready-made meal is a perfectly legitimate dinner in my books. I wink at the audience. No matter, I'll win the crowd over with my cheekiness. It's the usual story. 
My stomach grumbles and my mouth salivates as I select my favorite ready-made meal. It's a chicken curry laksa. Oh, yum. I wipe the drool from the corner of my mouth. This meal is heaven in a box. I lick my lips and consider inhaling it now. I scrunch up my nose as I foresee media repeats of me scoffing my face with food. Not a pretty look. I spot Priya in the audience and she shakes her head at me. She points to the meal and then to the checkout. How did she know? I swear she's got a radar for my mischief. With ease and lightning fast speed, I extract my slim wallet from my love pockets blazer. I've already paid and tucked my wallet away. Bravo! Kara's completed the mission so quickly. But what's this? I tuck my meal under my armpit. With no bag, I'm forced to carry it by hand. My cheeks redden as I can't fit this meal into my pockets. I clear my throat. I swear these throat tickles and coughing fits are getting old fast. I splutter. <clears throat> I usually order online and get my groceries delivered. There, there. No need for embarrassment. Harry arrives behind me. I glance over my shoulder and admire his shopping basket contents with fresh soup and crispy salad, tomato, and avocado ingredients. I shuffle my feet to turn to meet him. I gasp as he approaches me. My cheeks redden as I admire his handsome face and fit body. <laughs> I just can't stop. This girl's a roller coaster of emotions. She goes like, I just want to punch his stupid face in and stomp on his bags. I was like, man, is he a hunk. <laughs> girl. He already looks stunning in his tailor-made waistcoat and tie. When coupled with a shopping basket, he looks so adorably homely. Homely? <laughs> Homey, maybe? I don't think homely is the right word she's looking for there. Mentally, I'd classified him as untouchable given his brand Juchi and his family's reign on the fashion empire. I'd unconsciously elevated him to sitting on a throne as king of handbags and luggage. Give a man a shopping basket and suddenly he's humanized, normal, reachable. My heart sings at the mere possibility. Snap out of it, Kara! Yes, he's attractive. Okay, now he's even more so being humanized. Yes, those ingredients he selected are delicious. As I imagine him preparing dinner, my eyes shine and my lips part. He wiggles his finger at my mouth. Mm-hmm. You've got a little drool there. How embarrassing. Are you hungry? Do you want me to cook for you? <laughs> I wipe away my drool with my hand. How did he know? <laughs> his eyes twinkle. Wait, he's offering to cook for me? But... <laughs> I... I don't get your deal, sir. Um, so far I'm getting the vibe that as long as you pick the top options, you're good to go as far as it seems to be. I'm going to make a save. I want to see if, like, the sound changes depending on what option you pick. Okay, so the, the sound is still the same. That's good to know. So the sound doesn't change. No obvious way to tell if you're picking a, a right or wrong a answer. Okay, that's good. That is good. Um, I mean, so far this has been going well. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this. <laughs> Since our girl likes to go hot and cold. Right now she's hot, so we'll be like, yeah. My eyes shine as his offer matches the thoughts in my head. Heck yeah. Tell me where and when and I'll be there. He titters and blinks rapidly. I wasn't expecting such enthusiasm. Right? We'll have to rain check though, being mid-battle and all. So it's gonna happen? Ah, such a tease. Um. He shakes his head and covers one side of his face with his hand. His uncovered eye stares curiously at me. I can feel my stomach flipping, but he's right. I need to focus on the battle. Round two, Harry wins on storage and hands free. I acknowledge Kara's speediness of payment, but it's insufficient to steal the point. Let's move on to the next battle. I close my eyes and sigh dramatically. 
Aw, oh, I wish I could cleanly win around. Actually, any publicity is still good publicity for me. I'm going to show strength. I choose positive thoughts. I've always been a glass half full person anyway. There's still three rounds to go. Plenty of opportunities to make my mark. I locate Polly in my pocket and squeeze her for luck. Game on for the next round. Ah, oh, yeah, disco, disco. Kind of hard to dance with a bag, we'll admit. Round three, nightclubbing dancing scene. Karen, Harry, go! The tunes are rocking. I let the music take over and forget the world. Heck, I'm not even on a TV show now. There's just me and the rhythm. The song playing is upbeat and energetic, mirroring my mood precisely. My body grooves on autopilot. My musicality trained ears hear an opportunity for a finger point to the air and a spot turn. Nailed it! I glance at Harry. He looks like he's going to puke again. I approach him and offer Polly. Do you want to borrow my good luck charm? Um... His cheeks redden as he looks down. His sheepish eyes meet mine. I chortle as his fingers brush mine as he squeezes Polly and pockets her in his waistcoat. <laughs> Why do you like her so much? I mean, great, I love it, but... Yes, thank you. <laughs> yes, I will take this. I doubt a toy pirate will save me from my own two left feet. Well, you never know. But at this stage, I'll take all the help that I can get. He bites his lip adorably. He avoids my eyes initially before reluctantly returning my gaze. Dancing isn't my strong suit. Whoa. <laughs> I catch him as he trips over doing the basic step touch. Whoa, easy there. I wink at him. He swallows and looks away. Want to learn a foolproof way to stay upright on the dance floor? His mouth drops open. Such magic exists? Please show me. Are you a wizard? I plant my feet shoulder width apart and bounce on the spot. Get some stability like this. All you need to do is shift your body weight slightly from foot to foot. Bounce single single double. Try it. He bounces and manages to stay upright. He flashes me a small smile. I'm doing it. <laughs> I'm doing it. He's surviving, but still bounces awkwardly on a crowded dance floor. I narrow my eyes and bite my lip. How can I get close enough to him to pull off my plan? Your plan? What do I do? What's the plan? What are we doing? What's our plan, girl? Um... I mean, we, we basically were just dancing with him, so yes? Harry, spin me. I grab his hands and command him to spin me on the dance floor. His eyes are weary. His mouth protests, but he purses his lips as he changes his mind. I clutch my hip in mock pain as his side bag crashes into me mid-spin. Ooh, girl! Oops. I pretend to wince and imagine a heaviness in my chest. Ow! Your side bag hit me! He's like, ugh! He lowers his shoulders. I'm sorry. Are you okay? Yeah, yeah, I'm okay. It stung a little at first when your buckle hit me, but it's okay now. Thank goodness for that. He rubs the back of his neck. This bag is a hindrance. I'm getting rid of it. <laughs> the corners of my mouth turn up in triumph. I beam at him and gesture towards the clock room. Right this way, sir. He tips his head to the side. He eyes me suspiciously. What are you so happy about? Nothing. I wiggle my finger at him. Didn't you wish for a solution to get rid of your bag? He scrapes his hand through his hair and rubs the back of his neck. Yes, but at what cost? Something's not quite right. <laughs> Something's afoot. You're projecting a victory dance and triumph over me. But the round's not finished yet, so why? I step lightly and guide him to the back of the queue. Well, why don't you see for yourself? Ah. Uh. Harry groans at the ten women ahead of us in the cloakroom queue. I just want to dump this bag and get back to the dance floor. Is it always this bad? Hmm. I rub my left arm with my right hand. I don't even need to fake my sadness. The reality of pocket inequality is something I fought against for forever. 
Welcome to the women's world, where clothes lack functional pockets, handbags are annoying, and cloakroom cues are the worst. I hold my head high as I've made a difference to this inequality. I wink at him and beam. Not for me and my Love Pockets customers, though. With my designs, you don't need a bag at all. No more cloakroom cues for me. He considers, eyes me appreciatively, and gives me a curt nod. I think I understand a little more what you mean. Hey. And I predict your easy win this round. Congratulations. Well, that was very... Um... Decent's not the right word. Well, decent, maybe. Very decent of him. Round three! Kara wins on bag-free dancing and time efficiency. Harry's in the lead with winning two rounds, and Kara close behind with one win. On to the next battle! I pump my fists in the air. Yes, I won! I throw my head back, close my eyes, and smile, basking in my success. Finally, a clean win. Oh. Round four. Surprise round. Get from A to B. Kara and Harry, go! I raise my eyebrow at the simplicity of this challenge. I shrug as the straight line path looks like a child's. The hairs on the back of my neck stand up as a random person approaches us. So far, the battles only have me and Harry. This extra person is dodgy. It takes two to tango, baby. You give me dodgy, I give you trouble in kind. I put on a brave smile and start playing my part. Hi, Harry. Hurry up. I'm over here. Oh. Harry winces as I scream at the top of my lungs, even though he's right next to me. I wink at him to let him know it's all part of my plan. Um. He eyes me curiously and gives me a small nod. I hold my chin high and glare cold, hard eyes at the random. My aim earlier was not to deafen Harry, but rather to let the random know I'm not alone. I'm not afraid to make a scene, and whatever they're planning is simply not worth it. The random looks up in alarm. They eye me up and down looking for something. When they can't see it, they give up and step aside. I sail past the random, not realizing Harry has fallen behind. Um. Harry eyes nervously for an opening or escape from the random person. Ow! Harry yelps as the random bumps into him to steal his wallet. But that's just a cover. The random steals Harry's side bag and escapes. Harry got mugged on live television? Scott seriously is twisted. That's messed up. Oh. Harry's posture stoops and he stares off into the distance. Harry's shaken up by the theft, albeit fake theft, but theft nonetheless. What should I do? Do you, do you want that? It, uh, you know, like, do you have something in your eye? Are you, like, genuinely upset that your bag was taken? Tell Harry off. Why would you tell Harry off? That's so rude. My blood boils. I know it's a fake theft on a ridiculous TV show, but this is a matter of principles. I chase down the thief. He stares at me in disbelief as I bend down low like a bull about to charge and slam my right shoulder into his stomach. As he sprawled on the floor, I click my fingers for the bag. I'll be taking that back, thank you very much. Here you go. I pop the strap back on Harry's shoulder. I give him a reassuring squeeze. Look, you don't have to cry anymore, your bag's back. Your bag is returned. All is well with the world. Huh? Wh what? Oh, oh, wow. Thanks. Uh, wh wh oh, 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 oh. <laughs> he was too busy crying, he didn't even see how awesome she was. <laughs> I whistle out the left side of my mouth and dance on the heels of my feet. By the way, I took a 20 from your wallet, by the way. You know, the finder's fee. <laughs> he barks out nervous laughter. I just got mugged, and now you've relieved me of 20 bucks. Uh-oh. I desperately seek Priya out in the audience. Whoops, I did it again. Uh, sheesh, whoops. I'm sorry, Harry. That was a bad joke. I swear I didn't really take your money. I was trying to cheer you up, honest. Relax. It's just automatic self-deprecating talk from me. Don't worry. I feel that. 
Seriously, are you okay? We could ask the thief to take Scott's bag and get revenge for you. He shakes his head furiously. No, I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy. Very decent of you. He cocks his head sideways and stares at me. Why did you help me? When someone needs help, I help too. His face softens as all tension leaves it. Thanks. Magnificent battle so far! We're currently tied 2-2 as Harry's won round one with a client meeting and round two grocery store. Kara's won round three nightclub dance and round four thwarted a thief. We're neck and neck. It's down to the final round for the tiebreaker. Who will emerge victorious? Let's give our contestants a mighty round of applause for the final round. <laughs> well, aren't you looking sparkly? Last and final round five. Fashion catwalk to showcase bags or no bags. Well split up this time. Harry, you're on first. The floor is yours. Go! Sweat drips from my forehead. My hand wipes off the excess before it drips on my makeup. I rub my hands together and release a bark of nervous laughter. My heart races as I see Harry getting ready for his turn. Hi there. Hello. I nearly jump out of my skin when Harry appears next to me. Ah, uh, sorry. You know that kaleidoscope of butterflies in your stomach earlier? They're residing in mine now. He presses Polly back into my hands. Thank you. Thanks for loaning me your good luck charm. I'm returning her to you. I squeeze Polly, which briefly gives me kid-like joy. I picture Priya cheering me on and carefully return Polly to my pocket. Brilliant timing, Harry. I need all the help I can get for this round. You'll do just fine. You seem to succeed at everything. I doubt a measly fashion catwalk would be any different. Thanks, Harry. Good luck out there. Ooh. So I'm just like, walk, walk, sexy, walk. <laughs> I think this is my favorite song so far. I love this. Harry gets himself ready. My nerves are so shot, I can barely concentrate on this round. I can barely concentrate because all I'm thinking of is, I'm too sexy for my shirt. <laughs> This song! I love it! Harry's back faces the audience. My cheeks flush as I admire the broadness of his shoulders. He's quite the specimen of a man. Uh, uh, concentrate, Kara. <clears throat> <clears throat> he places his left hand on his hip and takes a wide stance. A female wolf whistles and gets slapped down. I roll my eyes. Damn straight! Respect, please! Introductory music starts playing, and he taps his right foot in rhythm. He winks at the crowd as he peeks over his right shoulder. The crowd whoops and cheers. Damn, he's good. Harry swivels on his right foot to turn around. Gasps erupt as he falls down. His two left feet strike again. I was gonna say, I thought you were bad at this. Ouch. He stands up sheepishly, shrugs, and presses his index finger to his lips, pleading for the audience to keep his secret. Damn, he's good, using the accident in his favor. Oh. He recovers quickly as he struts down the catwalk like a pro. When he reaches the front, he poses with his side bag, turns, and repeats. Ooh. With his back to the crowd, he hides his nerves. He swallows several times and loosens his tie. He nods curtly to himself. Harry looks incredibly uncomfortable, but plasters a weak smile on his face. He forces himself to do the anime peace sign and wink. Yes! Get it! Mwah. His cheeks flush crimson as he puckers up his lips. Our eyes lock as he blows out the kiss. Surely that wasn't meant for me. The audience swoon when he blows them a kiss, not realizing they weren't the intended target. My heart sinks. With the winner already a sure thing, why bother with my turn? Hell no. I'm doing this. I don't wait for Scott's permission. 
As soon as Harry returns to the starting point, I gesture for his side bag. Huh? His mouth drops open. Um. He licks his lips. His eyes dart sideways. His head moves to the side as if to size me up. He purses his lips, showing me he really doesn't want to part with his bag. Yet his brow furrows as he can't decide on a good enough reason to turn me down. He shrugs at me half-heartedly, then reluctantly hands his bag over to me. I spin and allow his side bag to crash into my body, exaggerating my wincing. I openly let my face show disgust as his side bag slips off my arm. I discard the bag by throwing it off the stage. Most of the audience laughs, too boo at me. I, yeah, I was really worried you were gonna throw it. I'm like, it's still his bag. I push back my shoulders and dis a strong po posture. I extract my phone, wallet, and keys from my blazer, fanning them out like a poker hand. I twist my right foot over my feet and then untwist for visual appeal. I expertly return all items to the blazer. I throw back my head, fling open my blazer front, and let it dramatically fall down my back. I catch my blazer by the collar, flick it over my shoulder, wink at the crowd, and strut back. Um. <laughs> my bag! His downturned facial features make me do a double take. I look over to Priya, her head buried in her hands. I've gone and done it again, haven't I? My eyes bulge in horror as I watch the instant re. I've stolen his bag and discarded it like it was nothing. All on live television. I imagine how I'd react if someone did that to me. Let's say I'd be a hell of a lot angrier than he is. I ball up my fists and nod curtly to myself. I'll correct this wrongdoing. How do I return Harry's side bag to him? Yeah, so if somebody in the crowd could just like bring that bag up, that'd be great. A actually, Harry, if you can see through the tears, maybe you should go just grab it. It's over there in that clump of dust. Come on, make it right, girl. My eyes desperately scan the floor around the stage. The shiny buckle of his side bag reflects the stage lights. Phew! I'm sorry, Harry. That was beastly of me. Here's your bag back. You've got quite the mean streak, you know that. Very. I lose my head when it comes to bags. I'm pro pocket, as you know. I'm really sorry you got caught up in the fire. Even if you're passionate, you still need to respect people. Facts. Hmm. He's right, but there's no way I'll let him know that. Round five. Final round. Harry wins on fashion style and catwalk charisma. Kara, I'm tempted to remove a point for bad sportsmanship, but I'll let it slide today. Kara, any comments before I announce the winner? I raise my fists in the air. You don't need bags to live. Bags can be annoying. I shrug my shoulders and wink at the camera. Wouldn't you agree that clothes should have functional pockets instead? Check out my love pockets range. Harry, any comments from you? Bags are for everyone. Not everything can fit into pockets. Check out Juji Fashion for your handbag and luggage needs. I'm going to sum up the scores. I'm pleased to announce Harry as the winner. He won rounds one on work commute, two on grocery shop, and five fashion catwalk on the basis of storage, professionalism, hands-free, fashion style, and catwalk charisma. Kara, good effort from the Pocket Queen Challenger. Please join me in a round of applause for our contestants today. May I say a few words? Oh. Of course. His eyes gaze expectantly at me. I can't look away. Your pockets excelled in speedy payments, dancing freely and anti-theft design. Well done. Thank you. My mouth drops to the floor. Scott laughs. Ha 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 Ah, you're right, Harry. I should have acknowledged Kara specifically. An excellent summary. My face is flushed red and my eyes avoid his. Thanks, Harry. I'm sure our folks at home want a quick look ahead to the future. 
Harry, what's your next priority? Some arrange handbags and luggage. He looks over to me, contemplating. I wonder how anyone could survive a hot summer's day without a bag. I mean, a drink bottle alone doesn't fit into your pockets. Let alone sunscreen and, well, whatever else you need. My blood boils. Today's challenge was not enough, huh? I'll show you up in summer. Just you wait and see. My summer clothes design will triumph over any bag you make. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. See this? I love this banter. May the challenges continue over summer. One final item for today. Harry, in your professional opinion, can anyone survive a whole calendar month without bags? Shh. He crosses arms and glares at me. Impossible. He looks up at the ceiling, then back at the audience. You need to carry things, which don't always fit neatly into pockets. External storage is essential. It's why I'm in business. I grind my teeth. Hmm, I tend to agree with Harry. I seriously doubt anyone can survive a whole month without bags. Kara, how do you plan to prove it? I'm posting daily videos and photos for proof. Ah, but I'm a man of little faith. Now if there was a witness to such a challenge. Scott looks over to Harry expectedly. You're just trying to get these two to become a couple. No way. I've got plans for the next month. Plus, her video and photo evidence sound fine. Scott looks over to me next. No way. I'm true to my word, which is all you need. I'm afraid your word isn't enough. Witness an hourly proof or it didn't happen. He looks over to Harry. Harry, I've already cleared this with your family and business. Congratulations on being Kara's witness. You'll be my eyes and ears over the next month. Best of luck to you both. W wait, what? What power do you have? Huh? The witness challenge starts tomorrow. I look forward to daily updates. And that's a wrap for today's Versus Show. Stay tuned for next week's challenge. Wow. All right. Well, <laughs> I was wondering how these two were going to spend more time together. Now I know. I think that is it for me for right now, though, guys. I'm uh, over an hour at this point, but I wanted to see who was going to win that little spat. And I'm not surprised it was Harry. As much of a pro pocketer as I am myself, I do recognize there are some things that can only be carried in bags. Alas, as much as I do love my pockets. But for just like running out of the house and like getting, you know, running to the store, I don't want you to need bags. But a purse is not going to help with groceries. I'm just saying. You can fit your wallet and your keys in a pocket. It's fine. You can go for a walk. But just pockets, it's fine. <laughs> oh, but anyway, I had a great time with this. This was super fun. The art is gorgeous. The music's really fun. The characters are quirky. I love the writing. I, I just had an overall great time. So yeah, if you guys would like to check out this game for yourself, I will leave a link to it down below. It's on Itch.io. And also, I have links to the soundtrack for this game and to the Atomi Jam that happened this year, if you would like to check out any of the other entries that were in that. So yeah, all kinds of good stuff. Thank you guys for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this as much as I did. And until next time, I will see you later.